Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Truth Noir. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight. I've seen him speak a couple times, and he's extremely knowledgeable about a great number of topics. Um, and he's uh, here to share some of that information with you. Most of it I've never heard before. Like, I always learn a lot when he's on. Uh, and so I'd like to welcome him to the show. This is Atelston Fitzgerald Holder the First. Thank you so much for being on. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so I've heard you speak about uh, spectrum disorders like autism, uh, global consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, computer technology, like it, it just all over the place. And so um, what is it that you'd like to speak to us about tonight? Uh, today, probably an extension. I did a one hour lecture on drone box um, previously. Um, taking a cross-disciplinary, a multidisciplinary, a transdisciplinary, and also an interdisciplinary approach to mental disorder, okay. where I approach mental disorder from uh, 10 key areas, uh, philosophical analysis, psychological analysis, a physics analysis, a musical theoretical analysis, a linguistic analysis, a parapsychological, uh, a, a, a psychopathological, a pathophysiological, a neurological approach and a geophysics approach. And it was basically a one hour discussion covering mental disorder from all these different disciplines. And today I would probably, probably like to, maybe an extension of it, or possibly see whatever direction this goes in for them. Sure, yeah, I'm down for that as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, I have, uh, worked with kids in the past that had autism mm -hmm. and uh, it, I never saw a case like I never saw two kids that ever had the same kind of symptoms or um, like anything resembling the other child that also had a diagnosis with autism there's always something new Mm. And so, like, do you have any theories on how this manifests in so many kids these days? Because it mm. seems like statistically the numbers have been going up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would probably use the X-Men analogy where um, it's, it's quite conspicuous that there, there's some sort of biolog biological evolution occurring with the X-Men. And no two gifts are identical, but it's clearly they're X-Men. So... From that perspective, what you find with not just neurotypicals, but atypicals. No, I'm not an expert in this area um, because my views are based from, uh, from a, a self-referential, um, which is sort of subjective, and empirical analysis only, which is based on a sort of intersubjectivity or uh, the collective view of others who've had the same experience as well. And what I've observed is no two atypicals even if you look at it from a, um, um, a parapsychological approach or uh, psychopathology, no two of the same bipolar or mania share the exact same phenomenon. So there's a number of different variances. So someone who's going through manic episode and grandiosity, they might have a sort of elated impulsivity. Someone else promiscuity might ascend off the roof someone else might experience a high level of grandiosity, right, which is the augmentation of one's ambition. So it's hard to put it into perspective in terms of what are the commonalities they share. But what you do find is they share a commonality across the board in terms of their emotional attributes, in terms of impulsivity, disinhibition, grandiosity, pathological compulsion, and promiscuity. And empathy a lot of times too, right? Uh, yeah, empathy. Empathy, of course, yeah. And empathy is one of those things I spend uh, uh, extensive time researching in terms of is this, is, is this biological, is this a biological predisposition or are there environmental factors involved in terms of what induces this deep-seated level of compassion a person may have for someone else, so, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. 